In today's video, we're gonna talk about the new breakdowner in Blender. I'm Luciano, and welcome to the Adventures of Lollipop Man. <laughs> this episode is sponsored by me. Use the code below to get 10% discount on any of my products. Hi, I'm Luciano, and welcome to the Adventures of Lollipop Man. Today's video, I'm going to talk to you about the new breakdowner. The cool thing is that the breakdowner has been in Blender for a long, long time, but recently got a few really nice updates that make it much easier to use, and, and also you can use it in the graph editor right now, which we'll see how to do. So without further ado, remember to like and subscribe, and let's get on it. So right here, we are in Blender again, yet again, and you can see we got this character right and it's in post mode as you would expect that's how the way that, that it works currently because it uh, sooner than later it's going to be working also on object mode as well but you might know of this little tool here called the breakdowner right i've talked about this in a previous video that you can find right here right at the top corner and this tool is very very cool because it allows you to create new poses based on what you have already so let's say i'm gonna move this over here and let's say we have this pose right here pose a we're gonna call this one pose a and this one right here pose b actually let's just get rid of that one and let's say this is pose b so pose a and pose b right so if you just interpolate normally these poses you'll get something weird like that right now the cool thing is that if you use shift e what it does is first of all you get here at the top a little slider that is telling you where you are in the mix between those two poses right so if i press shift e you're gonna see right away that my pose jumps because it goes to the 50 percent mix between a and b right so if i go to a it just copies this first one. You can see it here in the keyframes, in the keyframe values, right? It goes exactly like that one. And then if I go to B, it does it to the second one, right? Now, as you can see, in if I go to the A one, the elbow changes a little bit because it only affects the controllers that I have selected, which are in this case, the hand and the fingers. Now, I'm gonna get rid of this. And this tool has been there for a while and you can do things like press shift D and then press G and only control the translation. And you can press like now Y and only do the translation in Y. This with all the transforms, including properties, bone properties. And what's the other one? Yeah, bendy bone options. So that's not new, that's just, that's been there forever. You can check out that, that video that I mentioned before and you'll see a little bit more of a closer overview on that. But things that are new right now, as you can see, it's constrained to zero and a hundred, which make it a little bit easier to handle. Now on top of that, you just tap E and now you can see that slider got bigger. You can just go all the way and overshoot it as much as you want. Overshoot it to one side, overshoot it to the other side. That's pretty neat. Now, another thing that was added is that if I if I go again and hold control, it has increments of 10. And if I hold shift, now it goes much slower so you get more control over what you're doing, right? And this is freaking awesome. On top of that, you can also press H and then hide the bone so it will only show you the character but not the controllers. And that's pretty cool, right? Now, if you go here, you're gonna see that we have a new option called blend to neighbor and blend to neighbor what it does is it starts blending from the current frame to whatever is a or b so if i press shift alt e you can see that now it doesn't jump when i start and now if i push to a it just makes it more similar to a and if i push to b more similar to b so this makes it easy to blend this current pose with those, which will make it much nicer to create ease outs or ease ins and stuff like that, right? So you can see now, now it starts slow there and then boom, goes fast later, right? And it can allow you to, for instance, try to create a new pose in between. And then if you press that, now you can blend it towards the old one instead of like breaking it and losing that pose that you currently have much much nicer 
Now, on top of this, this is one of the reasons I feel this is still not completely finished, but I think it's getting there, is that you can also use this in the graph editor. So I'm gonna click one of those channels. If you're wondering how to hide the channels by just clicking them, go check out my video, Hacking the Graph Editor. Now, if I select one of the channels and you go to key, you're gonna see that in the key, it's called differently. It's called sliding, blah, 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 slider operators, right? And also you're gonna see that both of these options do not have a hotkey. I added one to them, which I'm gonna show you how to do right now by right clicking, change shortcut. I'm gonna do Alt Shift E, just like in the viewport, so it's the same. So if I do Alt Shift E, I get it here. But if I go Alt Shift E, I get it here as well. And it does exactly the same. What this is doing is what is happening here to my keyframe under the hood. It's basically grabbing the keyframe, right? And finding, let's change the type of thing. I'm blending it towards the previous one or towards the next one, right? If I would do breakdowner, it will grab this, both of these keyframes and calculates half of it. And then it starts blending towards one side or the other one. But with blend to neighbor, what it will do it will just grab this value and then start blending it towards one or blending it towards the other one. And so, yeah, I hope you enjoyed this new feature. You can integrate it into your workflow. As I said, it doesn't seem to be completely finished yet, but it's good to know so you could get used to it right from the start and get it integrated into your workflow to make yourself a faster and more efficient animator. And I hope you have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year's. And remember to like and subscribe and see me next time.